So I'd like to maybe start with um, a little story. So there was a little young boy walking one day with his granddad and his granddad said to him, son, there's a battle of two wolves inside all of us. And the first one is the bad one and it's fear it's resentment, it's judgment, it's lies. And the second one is the good one. And it's love, and it's kindness, and it's empathy. Whoops, racing ahead of my slides. And it's empathy, and it's truth. And so they continue to walk on for a little bit further until the little boy stops in his tracks and he says, he looks up at his granddad and he said, but granddad, which one wins? And his granddad whispered quietly in his ear and he said, son, the one you feed. And I love this parable and I tell, I share this story with you today because I think this feeds into every aspect of our lives. It's the things we feed it's the things we pay attention to. And I think most of us, we all go around with our smartphones in our hand and we're not paying attention to anything around us. But we're not paying attention to anything around us, which is why it's so damn hard, Leslie, to do what you've done. Because it's hard to incorporate a new, ch a new habit, a new change into our lives. You know, it's hard to create a new good habit and it's hard to break a, a bad habit. But we can do hard things. And I'm here to remind you that we can do hard things. In fact, I have this poster framed in my bedroom and in my kitchen to remind myself daily that I can do hard things. Does anybody know who the gentleman is on the right? There you go. There was a good view. <laughs> yeah, so Roger Bannister. So in 1954, Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile. And throughout history before 1954, nobody thought that this was doable. In fact, people thought that if you ran a four-minute mile, you would die. And not only would you die, but your heart would explode inside your chest. So that would deter anybody from, winning, from running a four minute mile, right? But what Roger Bannister did was every day he visualized 359, crossing the, the finishing line at 359, 359, 359. And then in 1954, he crossed the finishing line at 359. And so what happened afterwards was really interesting. All of a sudden, everybody started running four minute miles. Like the belief that you would die or that your heart would bust out of your chest was busted, right? Everybody started running four minute miles. And it wasn't that there was some incredible nutritional advancement or a change in the training methodology that they did in 1954. It was Roger Bannister knew that success is an inside out job. And he visualized it every single day. And then when the belief manifested into physical form, he was still alive, right? Everybody started believing that they could do it and every, everybody started doing four minute miles. I mean, certainly not me, but people who would be of that type of personality doing four minute miles or running, running at that speed. Um, I believe that we can apply the same level of thinking that Roger Bannister did to break the four minute mile to our lovely planet. And I believe that if we raise our, ha raise our heads from our smartphones and start paying attention and seeing more and more people like Leslie and Ivana doing the things that they're doing, then we can also do it. We can collectively turn this Titanic around. So what I'd like to do is share with you a process that I use to incorporate new change or new habits into my life. And this is a strategy or process that I used this time last year 
to, I had read the health benefits of a cold shower. I don't know if anybody takes cold showers, but there's a few hands <laughs> being raised. So I hated the cold. This was not something that I thought was going to be easy. But for me now, taking a cold shower in the morning is absolutely a habit. Um, so the first thing is to don't quit in incorporating a new change or habit in your life is don't quit before the third attempt. Because the first attempt is we have to get over the fear of it. So in the first attempt, we get over the fear of it. In the second attempt, we get to learn it. And then in the third attempt, we get to actually like it. So I invite you now to think of a change that you want to incorporate into your life. We are at a Planet Cause event, so technically it should be something to do with that. Um, so if we think about a habit and then, or a habit or a change that we want to incorporate, we apply the three C's. Again, the, the key here is repetition, right? And for, for one person, it may be three times until it becomes a habit. For another person, it might be 21 times, 30, or 21 days, 30 days, 60 days, right? But the key is repetition and to just stick at it. And then the second C is, the second C is capability. <laughs> the second C, excuse me, is capability. So what is the actual strategy, the mechanics of incorporating that new change into our lives? And coincidentally, the third C, um, or the second C, capability, is really born out of the third C, which is challenge. So when we challenge ourselves, we really have an increased probability, if you will, of creating that lasting change in our lives. Because when we do the easy things in life, life gets hard. And when we do the hard things in life, life gets easy. And remember, we can do hard things. So I want to leave you with an Aristotle quote, which says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. Thank you.